Okay, so today we're diving deep into education in India. And specifically, we have this report from Carnegie Mellon University called Design Thinking for Education in India. And I have to say, like when I first saw this title, I was like, design thinking? I don't know what that means, but this report is really interesting. It is, um, you know, India is at this interesting crossroads right now with their education system. Yeah. Where they're trying to really figure out, okay, how do we take this really rich history of learning that we've had and bring it into the 21st century. It's so interesting because like the report talks about these guru cools and I was like, I've never even heard of a guru cool before, but it sounds so much cooler than any classroom I ever sat in. Yeah, they were like these really vibrant community centers where, Mm -hmm. you know, learning was just so integrated into like your everyday life. Yeah. But the report doesn't shy away from like the challenges facing the current system either. Yeah. It's almost like they said like, um, uh, you know, almost verbatim, they're talking about how it feels like Islands of excellence in a sea of mediocrity. Wow. Which is a pretty tough assessment. I yeah, think. that's a tough assessment. Like, what happened was, is it just that shift, like they talk about back in the 1830s to like a classroom system? Yeah, there's definitely a big part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, they talk about how that British introduced system really emphasized rote memorization. Yeah. And it created this disconnect that's persisted even to today yeah. between more traditional ways of learning that were so hands on and experiential. So we traded like exploration for memorization marathons, basically. Yes. yes. And now it's like no wonder because the report says over 50 percent of employers in India say that they really struggle to find graduates who have those problem solving skills. It's a big issue. Yeah. And this is where this idea of design thinking comes into play. Okay. And I think it's really important to recognize that the report really emphasizes that distinction between doing design and design thinking. So it's not just about like handing every kid a paintbrush. Exactly. And hoping for the best. Yeah, it's not about like the aesthetic. It's about the mindset. So like what is design thinking then? So at its core, design thinking is really about approaching problems from a human-centered perspective. Mm. You know, really trying to understand what is the root of this problem and then coming up with creative, innovative solutions. Okay. It's about empowering students to become problem solvers. I can see how that would be valuable. Yeah. Especially today. Absolutely. When things are changing so quickly. Right. You have to be adaptable. You have to be able to face new challenges. And like they talk about weaving that into the entire curriculum. Right. Not just having it be like one separate class. Exactly. And I think they bring up a really great example with Finland's education system. Okay. Where they have this phenomenon-based learning approach and it's very interconnected. Mm. Students are encouraged to see how all these different subjects relate to one another. That makes me think about how like my own education felt so siloed. Right. History was history math was math and never yeah. the two shall meet. Exactly. And it wasn't until later in life where I was like, "Oh wow, this is all interconnected." Right. And imagine if you had that realization earlier on, that's the potential here. Yeah. You know, it's about helping students make those connections earlier on so that they can think more critically and apply that knowledge. So how does this actually play out then? Because like changing an entire education system is not a simple thing to do. Absolutely not. And this is where India's national education policy of 2020 comes in. Okay. Or NEP 2020, as is more commonly known. Yeah. And the report spends a lot of time looking at this. Okay. Because NEP 2020 is ambitious. Okay. It really does seem to recognize that there needs to be this shift towards innovation that we've been talking about. Okay. They're introducing a new structure, they're emphasizing skills, and they're even mentioning design thinking directly. Right. But it's not just about adding a buzzword to the curriculum, you know? Right. It's like, are we just putting lipstick on a pig? You know, it might look different from the outside, but is anything really changing? And they bring up this idea of innovation ambassadors. Yeah. Which sounds really cool on paper. You know, they're like these champions of creativity within the education system. Right. But the report really questions, will that be enough to actually create this mindset shift? Right. Because how do you even measure that success? You know, are we looking for like more patents? Are we looking for like kids starting companies or is it something deeper? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think this is where the report encourages us to think a little bit beyond some of those more surface level changes. Yeah. And they actually go into this really cool four phase framework for learning that I think kind of speaks to that. Okay, I'm intrigued. Lay it on me. Okay, so the first one is all about sparking curiosity. Even before you formally introduce a topic, So imagine, instead of starting a lesson on gravity with a definition, 
you challenge students with a question like, how can you stop water from falling out of an upside down glass using only a piece of card? Ooh, that's good. Right. I'm already hooked. And you've piqued their interest. Now they want to know like the why behind this. Yeah. And that's where that second phase comes in content delivery. Oh. So this is where you start to give them that information about, okay, this is how gravity works. Right. But you've already established that baseline of curiosity. So it's not just passively absorbing information. It's like I'm trying to figure it out exactly. as I'm learning. Yes. And then the third phase kind of kicks in, and this is absorption and evaluation. So now that they kind of have that base knowledge, they're really diving deeper, applying it through projects, experiments, discussions, you know, moving beyond those traditional exams. Because just memorizing a bunch of stuff for a test right. doesn't mean you've learned anything. Exactly. It's just regurgitation. Yeah. And then it leads to that final phase of reflection. Okay. And this is where students can kind of step back, connect the dots. How does this new knowledge fit into what I already know? How can I apply this in the real world? I love that. Yeah. But wouldn't something like that require like a massive shift in how teachers even approach their role? It definitely requires a different approach. And the report really emphasizes this importance of fostering a growth mindset. Okay, I've heard that term before, growth mindset, but yeah. I'm not sure I fully understand it. So it's about moving away from this idea that intelligence is fixed. Okay. And instead, really fostering this belief that, you know, your abilities can be developed through dedication hard work. Okay. It's about praising effort and perseverance. So instead of saying, wow, you're so smart, you say, wow, you really stuck with that problem or you wow. really worked hard on that. Exactly. Okay. And the report actually highlights the work of psychologist Carol Dweck. Okay. Who found that students who believe that their intelligence can grow are more likely to embrace challenges. Hmm. They persist through those setbacks and ultimately they achieve greater success. That makes sense. Yeah. Like fostering that love of learning. Exactly. And that curiosity. And that brings us to probably one of those intriguing and maybe unexpected ideas that they present, oh, which sure. is this idea of applying the Scrum framework to the classroom. Okay, I have to admit, when I read that in the report, I was like, wait, isn't that something they use in like software development? Right, it's typically used in like project management. Yeah. And it's definitely a thought experiment, but I think it's one that could be really revolutionary. Okay. So imagine teachers from different disciplines coming together. They're collaborating like a Scrum team and they're actually planning their lessons together. So instead of it being like, yeah. okay, well, I teach history, you teach math, it's like, how can we exactly. do these things? Exactly, how can we make these connections? Create a more holistic experience. And they suggest that these innovation ambassadors could even act as scrum masters. Oh, wow. To help guide and support teachers in actually implementing this new approach. Mm -hmm. So they're like the champions of collaboration. Exactly, oh. breaking down yeah. those silos. Yeah. But of course, the report acknowledges that this is not without its challenges. Right. Yeah. Like, are we talking about like a complete overhaul here of the whole education system? Because how do you even start to implement changes like this? Right. And I think the report is careful not to pretend that there are any like easy solutions, you know. Right. They, they really emphasize that any kind of successful implementation has to take into account like India's very specific context. So it's not just about like copying what works in Finland. Exactly. Somewhere else. It's about finding solutions that work for India. What are some of the challenges they highlight? Well, for one teacher training, you know, if we're asking educators to embrace these new ideas, these new approaches to learning, mm. they need to be given the tools to actually do that. It's like anything else. You wouldn't expect someone to just like build a house without yeah. any <clears throat> tools or knowledge. Right. And it's not even just about like the teaching methods themselves. It's like, shifting that whole educational philosophy. And then there's the issue of infrastructure. Right. You know, the report talks about how we need these more flexible learning spaces that can adapt to All. different learning styles and teaching styles. Yeah, get rid of those rows of desks. Exactly. And make it more collaborative. Right, more like those guru cools we were talking about. Bring in some beanbag chairs. Exactly. But wouldn't that take a lot of money? It would. And that leads us to another big challenge, which is funding. You know, they acknowledge that this would require a pretty substantial commitment from both the government and the private sector. Well, it makes you think, like, how do you balance that pressure to get those high exam scores? Right. Because in India, there's still a huge emphasis on exams and testing and like. Absolutely. How do you balance that with this more holistic approach? It's a tough balance. And I think the report emphasizes that there isn't like a one size fits all solution. Right. 
but it's about finding those ways to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. You know, like they talk about how India has this incredibly rich tradition of oral storytelling. Yeah. And how they can be such a powerful tool for learning. That's so true. Instead of just reading about something, you're hearing it. Exactly. It comes alive. It's engaging. It's exciting. And that's just one example. Yeah. You know, the report is full of these really interesting ideas about how you can weave together that tradition with innovation. Yeah. But it's not just about the what of education. It's also about the how. You know, like they talk a lot about the need for more authentic forms of assessment. Oh, interesting. So not just like can you memorize all these facts? Right. It's can you think critically? Can you solve problems? Can you be creative? Because ultimately that's what matters yeah, in the real world. Exactly. And I think that's what I really liked about this report. It's not just a theory. Right. It's like, okay, here's how we can actually do this. And it's for everybody involved. It's a call to action. It's the students. It's the parents. It's the educators. It's the policymakers. Absolutely. It's really interesting. It's about recognizing that we all have a stake in this. We all have a role to play in shaping the future of education. And being willing to maybe try some things that we haven't tried before. Absolutely. And being okay with things not working out perfectly the first time. Yeah. You know, embracing that idea that failure is just a part of the learning process. It's not the opposite of success. It's part of the journey. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. And I think that's what's so powerful about this report. It's not about tearing down the system. It's about making it better. We can always improve. Exactly. I love that. Well, this has really got me thinking about the power of education, you know, me too. not just in India, but everywhere to really transform lives and to shape the future. And Absolutely. this report really, I think, highlights that potential. It does. And I think it leaves us with a really powerful message, which is that it's up to us to actually cultivate that potential. It's like they handed us all these tools and now it's like, go build something amazing. Exactly. I love that. So to everybody listening, I would love to know what is the one thing you would change about education yeah. to make it more engaging, to spark that curiosity. That creativity. Yeah, that love of learning. Absolutely. Let us know. Yeah, let's keep this conversation going. This has been an incredible deep dive. It has. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And to everyone listening, we'll see you next time.